Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the neuroscience of the hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus means collection of fluid inside the ventricles of the brain or in the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain and spinal cord. So, hydro means water. Cephalus means brain. So, hydrocephalus. is the excessive accumulation of the cerebrospinal fluid inside the ventricles of the brain of the brain or in the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so we got the definition of the hydrocephalus. This is the excessive accumulation of CSF inside the ventricles of the brain or in the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, we know the flow of the cerebrospinal fluid that is formed from the choroid plexus. These are choroid plexus, choroid plexus that is present inside the ventricles of the brain. We have two lateral ventricles, one third ventricle, one fourth ventricle. Lateral ventricles are present inside the telencephalon or forebrain. Third ventricle is present in between the diencephalon. Fourth ventricle is present behind the pons and medulloblongata and in front of the cerebellum. There is communication from the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle by two foramina of Monroe or intraventricular foramen. There is communication from third ventricle to fourth ventricle through the cerebral equida or equiduct of Sylvius. From the fourth ventricle to the subarachnoid space, we have foramen of Magenda, we have two foramen of Lusca, one on this side, another on the other side. For, through this foramen, CSF goes to the subarachnoid space. From subarachnoid space, the CSF is passing through the arachnoid villi. We have arachnoid villi here. This is arachnoid matter. Okay. This is the arachnoid, this is arachnoid, arachnoid villi to the superior sagittal sinus of the dura mater. Okay, so it enters the venous blood. We have venous blood here, the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, so hydrocephalus is a condition like this excessive accumulation of CSF. So, what are the causes of hydrocephalus? We must know the causes. Okay. Causes of hydrocephalus or etiology of hydrocephalus. Okay. okay. So, etiology of hydrocephalus that includes the excessive production. excessive production of cerebrospinal fluid then we have blockades 
in the passage of the of the shear set circulation okay so these are the two important calls excessive production and we have some congenital defects congenital anomalies anomalies and idiopathic unknown cause of hydrocephalus so it may be due to excessive production of csf blockage of the passage of the cerebrospinal fluid circulation congenital anomalies and it may be idiopathic excessive production its source of production is the choroid plexus choroid plexus choroid choroid plexus okay. so if there is any papilloma in the choroid plexus then we may have excessive production papilloma a tumor or neoplasm papilloma of the of the choroid plexus okay especially in the infancy or even during the intrauterine life there may be papilloma of the choroid plexus that may lead to excessive production of the cerebrospinal fluid okay so we got that then blockades blockades in the circulation of csf okay most common is the cerebral aqueduct here cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of sylvius most common stenosis or atresia of the cerebral aqueduct also called aqueduct of Sylvius duct of Sylvius okay so there may be this is a narrow channel from third ventricle to the fourth ventricle so if this is is there is no canal here if it is too much stenosis it is atretic no no canal so there will be collection of the CSF inside the third ventricle and lateral ventricle. Third ventricle is also has choroid plexus. Lateral ventricle has choroid plexus. If there is any blockage here, then there will be there will be collection of CSF there. Okay, we got that. So blockage not necessarily due to congenital blockage is possible due to some disease process okay blockage of cerebral equator of cerebral equator okay it may be due to some disease process like that of cytomegalovirus infection cytomegalovirus infection or it may be toxoplasmosis toxoplasmosis okay it may be acquired by this cytomegalovirus infection toxoplasmosis is caused by toxoplasma gondii one protozoal infection disease that lead to blockage of the cerebral aqueduct so it may be congenital that may be x-linked trait or it may be due to cerebral aqueduct blockage due to cytomegalovirus infection 
Okay, so that blockage may be due to X link, X link trait. There is another possibility. Okay, so on site of blockage is the cerebral equator, but we may have blockage in the interventricular foramina of Monroe. Inter ventricular foramina of Monroe. Maybe one, maybe two foramen, maybe block together of Monroe. Okay, that may be a possibility. Blockage of interventricular foramen of Monroe or blockage of the of the foramen of Magendel foramen of Magendel Magendel the medial Magendel okay the median opening of the fourth ventricle going to the subacral space or foramina of foramina of Luska okay foramina of Luska this all three together may be blocked that may also lead to lead to hydrocephalus okay hydrocephalus may be due to blockage to the to the to the arachnoid villi that is going to the superior sagittal sinus to the venous blood so the csf from the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain like that okay we have the csf that surround the the brain in the subarachnoid space and that csf is absorbed to the superior sagittal sinus through the arachnoid villi so if there is any blockage here okay so blockage of the arachnoid villi or granulation villi that may lead to hydrocephalus and this may be blocked in case of meningitis or head injury like that of subarachnoid hemorrhage injury okay like subarachnoid hemorrhage okay so this passage may be blocked, so CSF cannot go from the subarachnoid space to the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, so we got the blockage. Sometimes we don't know the cause of hydrocephalus. Okay, we call it idiopathic condition, or sometimes brain substance may be atrophied. Brain substance may be atrophied, atrophied due to stroke okay maybe stroke or it may be due to a problem associated with some diseases like huntington disease so the cavity may be enlarged we call it hydrocephalus x vacu we'll go there later on so we got the causes of hydrocephalus now we have types of hydrocephalus types of hydrocephalus we have two types one is communicating hydrocephalus communicating hydrocephalus okay hydrocephalus okay so this is one type of classification of hydrocephalus communicating or high or non-communicating depending on what is the site of blockage 
types of hydrostasis according to the blockage according to the blockage okay communicating hydrostasis is a condition when there, there is communication from lateral ventricle to third ventricle third ventricle to fourth ventricle and fourth ventricle to the subarachnoid space okay the communication is patent the communication is patent from the lateral ventricle to the subarachnoid space from the lateral ventricle ventricles to the subarachnoid space okay so there is no problem in the foramen of monroe or cerebral equator or foramen of Nagendai, foramen of Lushka, these are open. So the CSF can go to the subarachnoid space. So there is some blockage here in the arachnoid villi. Okay, here blockage is in the arachnoid villi. Arachnoid villi, we call it communicating hydrocephalus. So another type is called non-communicating hydrocephalus. The communication is not patent, okay, between the ventricles. Okay, communication is not patent between the ventricles okay so there may be blockage in the interventricular foramina of monroe so lateral ventricle will collect a lot of C csf it will be dilated or there may be blockage in the cerebral equator then third ventricle lateral ventricle will be dilated there may be blockage in the foramen of mesendai foramen of loose con all three together, then fourth ventricle will be dilated, third ventricle dilated, lateral ventricle will be dilated. So if we take an, an ultrasonography or CT scan or MRI, we'll see this brain substance will have very large, large ventricle, okay? and the brain substance will be thinned out depending on the size of the cavity cavity is large brain substance will be thinned out okay so we have two types of hydrocephalus depending on the blockage one is non-communicating another is communicating communicating that means it is communicated to the subarachnoid space non-communicating there may be blockage here on one or both or maybe blockage here maybe blockage here and the loose curve okay so what what is the what is the sign symptoms of signs and symptoms of hydrocephalus okay hydrocephalus it depends on the age of the patient in case of infant in infancy we have large head large head with very prominent prominent scalp veins prominent skull veins okay so if, if i draw a skull of a of a okay so okay 
Okay, so skull will be like that. Head will be enlarged in both direction. Okay, and the forehead will be over the eye, and there will be sunset sign. Okay, in case of infant, we'll get sunset sign. Okay, sun set eye sign in infant. And also to remember that head will be enlarged. Head will be enlarged. Why head will be enlarged? Idea is that the fontanelli are present in infant between the skull bone. The there is some gap of the bone that is called fontanelli. Those are present and skull bone has not been properly ossified. So if there is there is collection of fluid in the ventricle, so the skull will expand. We can see very large anterior fontanelli and there is a gap between the skull bones. Some such sign is that, so we look at the eye and when the infant attempt to look upward, the eye don't move upward properly so you will see the white sclera over the cornea okay that is the sign and certainly there will be mental retardation and eventually death in infancy and childhood okay in adult sign symptom may be different head will not be expand because bone is ossified many years back we know that skull bone the fontanelli will close around the age of two so head would not be enlarged in adult or old individual so but we get different type of sign symptoms like in normal pressure hydrocephalus in adult hydrocephalus okay normal pressure hydrocephalus we find out this person has w w w syndrome Okay, so wakey, then wobble, wet syndrome. So a person will develop dementia and he has difficulty to maintain his posture, wobble and wet, he has incontinence of urine. Okay. So it depends on the on the condition age of the patient. Okay. So what is the management? Management by a neurosurgeon. What they do? They do the shunt operation. Shunt operation. They go inside the cranial cavity and put a catheter inside the dilated ventricle there is a valve system and another end of the catheter should go to the peritoneal cavity of the abdomen this is the shunt that is the cranio peritoneal toneal shunt okay but nowadays the neurosurgeon has has more advanced management. One is called the endoscopic endoscopic third ventricle lostomy. Okay, third ventriculostomy, ventriculostomy. Okay, so they connect the third ventricle to the subacnoid space from third ventricle. Subacnoid space is connected, so the CSF can go to the subacnoid space, then excessive CSF, then it, it will be absorbed in the superior sinus. So 
endoscopic third ventriculostomy okay they also do they cauterize the choroid plexus and also cauterization cauterization of of the choroid plexus okay okay it should be decided by the neurosurgeon what he like to do or what she likes to do depending on the age and the situation of the patient so that's all about the hydrocephalus if you like my video please support my channel please share the information with your friends and please subscribe me have a nice day bye now